Welcome back. Well, the liberation struggle war veterans of South Africa is demanding a once-off fee of 4.2 million rand from government. The group also wants a, month, a monthly pension stipend of 15,000 rand for each member for assisting in the fight against apartheid. The war veterans say that they've held various discussions over the years with government, but none of their signed agreements have been implemented. The organization is now preparing to file a class action. Member of the National Secretariat of the Liberation Struggle War Veterans, Mzugisi Ronyuza, joins us now for more on this. Mzugisi, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us in our studios today. I think firstly, take us through the demands that are being made um, by the struggle veterans and particularly this figure of 4.2 million rand. How did you come up with that figure? Okay. Uh, thank you for having me, Dokozo. And there was, I think, in, in, in 2000, mm. 2020, right, we marched to the union buildings as veterans. The march was informed by the challenges that veterans are facing, starting from 1994, during the integration. Mm. A lot of our comrades were not well received in the integration process of South Africa. Most of them were, were at, basically, they were absorbed into the defense force. Their conditions were not good were not addressed up until today. And most of them uh, had to, to leave the defense force, to leave the conditions that were not addressed for a number of years and found themselves outside the defense force. So as we speak now, with a lot of companies that are out, and most of them are poor, not taken care of. Most of them are still even poor even while they're working in the defense force. So we noted that all the formations that, integrated, that we integrated with, that were not uh, from the liberation side, were taken care of got benefits, got everything, and had the exposure to a lot of things that we never had exposures to. Remember that we are talking of a number of genera generations of all these three formations, which is Apla, MK, and Azala. There are, there's a lot of generations from the 60s up until now that are suffering with us, that are not taken care of, that are very much poor. So in 2020, when we decided to march, we said, man, our conditions are not improving, mm. and the black government is gradually losing power, and we don't know what will happen of us. Mm. And along the way, we notice that a number of our leaders, a number of former commanders, they are getting richer and richer by the day, while the, the foot soldiers are getting poor. Mm. So this figure, when we came to this uh, 4.2 million, remember that we've got lawyers, we've got uh, people who've got this actuarial background and, and expertise who assisted us in, in, in dealing with this figure. What they did is that they, they assisted us, us, us to, to, to sort of uh, calculate this, and it amounted to Ramlod of the way above this uh, 4.2 million, right? Uh, we said our government does not have money. We understand that. We said, can we come to the median of 4.2 instead of what was counted and what was said to be what is, is, is sort of deserved by veteran? We said 4.2 is nothing for a government that has got people that are very rich, that have achieved, that are in the economic mainstream while the veterans are on the sidelines of the economy. Mm. So this amount was not thumb sucked. This amount was properly calculated by learned people who got expertise in that. Because if you check a, a period, like for example, that 4.2 million, it's, it's purely for the junior soldiers, we can check. But we said, let's take the lowest and count it. And this, this, this figure was decided, was discussed with government, was proposed to government, uh, there was no negation on that to say that we cannot take this figure. Government said we need to talk on this figure and, and, and check how we will meet each other. We we're supposed to meet last year in January, we could not meet. On the issue of 15,000 rands pension. This pension, we did our own calculations. We sat down with the learned people, knowledgeable ones on this figure, and what would constitute uh, the basic livelihoods for a person who is a veteran. Because the food basket of South Africa, if I'm not mistaken, it was 4,000 rands some years back. Mm. We don't know now. Right. Uh, there was a proposal of 4,950 against the 15,000 that was informed by scientific calculation that was made by people who understand uh, the economy better than me. Uh, let this, uh, we have the, 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 the advisory council of the military veterans. It proposed this amount and sent it to the deputy minister of, of defense of, of, of the military veterans, say that this is what we think the veterans deserve. And luckily and coincidentally, when we calculated this, we, it amounted to the very same 15,000. We mm -hmm. discovered later that even the military veterans, uh, 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 military advisory council of the, 
of the DMV advised even the department on the very same amount. But surprisingly, and now of late we are told that we are going to get 4,950. And the surprising part is that on the regulation that has been prepared in the absence of the Act of Parliament, they are saying that you are going to get this 4,900 to honor you, to respect you, to address the injustices of the past. That's what the, the legislation says. And down in the legislation, it says not everybody is going to qualify. They've put the elements of disqualification there on who qualifies, who does not qualify, who is going to get. It negates what they are saying when it starts there. So basically, it does not address everybody. And when you look deeper into this, it does not even talk to all the veterans. Mm. Mr. Must... Mr. Okay. Khonyuz, and I apologize for okay, uh, okay. not pronouncing your surname correctly earlier. Um, I want to get to the heart of these consensus documents because what you've put forward is the fact that there's been some sort of signed agreement right that denotes some sort of contractual agreement between yourselves and government and the allegation that you're putting forward is that they've reneged on that yes. they've turned around you know uh, did an about turn and are now offering an offer that was not agreed to but through listening back to your reflections it appears that these were merely conversations at a proposal stage where the figure of, of 4.2 million as a once-off gratuity was proposed. The figure of 15,000 rand as a monthly stipend was proposed. What did government actually agree to? You know, from my observation and from what you observe, this was a hybrid type of, 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 of setup that we had. We negotiated with government and signed a consensus document. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are agreements that, we could, that there are demands that we could not agree on. They were put on the parking bay. We were supposed to carry them on in January of 2001. There were those that we agreed on that were signed in the consensus document. It was government and the liberation struggle of veterans that signed on those documents. The 15,000 was agreed on. It was supposed to be implemented on the 15th of March 2021. Uh, by the way, remember that we were arrested last year. Uh, it was in 20, last year in, in October. Uh, 2021. 2021. Yes. We were arrested... The reason for arrest was because we disagree on the how part, on how to implement what was agreed on between government and the liberation struggle of veterans. Starting from March, we went to a number of government departments, to DMV, to Union Building, trying to tell government that you said you are coming because we've got the presidential task team that was purely established for the implementation of the demands. We had the presidential task team on top. Below there's a presidential, presidential technical task team. If you have a technical testing, it's purely for the implementation purposes. Mm. So when we're supposed to implement, government does not come on board. So there's a challenge that we're having now. And there's a number of agreements. It was an, it's an issue, we have an agreement on the issue of the SAPS members that are frustrated in the SAPS. The, the pension funds, on the housing, on the issue of education. On the, there's a lot of agreements that are there. And um, unfortunately, the more we push government in addressing these, 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 uh, these agreements, no one seems to get, and comrades are dying on a daily basis. Even it's January now. Mm. We don't know the pure setup that we proposed on the issue of, 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 of education, whether it's addressed or not. Just check this month or next month. You'll find there's a backlog in terms of, of payments of, 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 of our children in schools. Some are not even in the system because they've been applying for a number of years, can't be taken in. In your engagements with government and this pronouncement to pay the 4,000, the figure I have here is yes. 4,500. You've mentioned 4,900. Yes. Which is it? I think it's 4,950. Okay, this, this figure of 4,950. Yes. What is government saying to you with regards to that proposed offer? What are the reasons, what's the justification for turning around on that 15,000 that was earlier agreed upon? We, we, we have a challenge uh, in Togozo of a government that does not, it's a government of the people, by the way, uh, but it does not speak to the people. They would implement without involving the parties that they were supposed to involve. Like, for example, you sign an agreement with somebody, you implement something outside the agreement. That's what is happening now. That, that, that 4,950 has been applied, it's implemented, there are pronouncements, nobody's involved. I don't, we don't even have a confirmation as to whether even other stakeholders in the Veterans Committee have been, have been engaged in that. But nobody is consulted, nobody's informed, they just implement. Mm. That's the challenge that we're having now. Yeah. Your uh, aggrieved uh, complaints have now been taken towards a legal route. I understand that you are filing or thinking of filing a class action suit against the government. Talk to us about that because 
for that to be successful, you would need to prove before the court that you have a valid course of action. Do you, do you think you have just that, a valid course of action? Of, of course we have. You know, once you have uh, the legal person would come in and advise you and tell you that you've got the, the case in this. Mm. They tell you after, out of noticing a number of facts that you put on the table. Mm. We cannot just wake up uh, and say that you want this amount without having facts on the table. And for example, it cannot be that uh, all the time, from time to time, when you make agreements uh, with government on such figures or on, on the livelihoods of veterans fund that you are taking on the sidelines. That 4.2 million, it seeks to address the livelihoods and seeks to integrate the veterans into the mainstream economy. Veterans are on the sidelines now. Veterans are pushed to depend on, on, on the welfare, to depend on the SRD, to depend on, on being given the handouts by government. You cannot plan for your child. You cannot leave any inheritance for your child. You can't leave anything. But those that decide for you, who are getting millions, should have plans for their kids, should have money for their kids, should leave something for their kids. So when we die every time our veterans, we seek donations, donations from the DMV, donations from the community, to bury our own. When our seniors are, 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 are buried, you can see pomp there. You can see that these people have a money. You can see they are cushioned. You can see these people, they, they've got the generational wealth for their own children. What do we leave for our children? Nothing. You know, the sense that I'm getting from you, uh, Mr. Khonyuza, is that political parties, organizations who are enjoying some semblance of executive um, power have forgotten you know, the, the heroes who fought to allow them to obtain these positions of power. Is that a sentiment that you agree with, that to, to you, have, it, you have been forgotten by these, to, by these to organizations? To a certain extent, yes. We've been given to governments, basically, to take care of us. Without our political organization giving the clear mandate and the clear direction on what should be happening. The government has forgotten us. Our political parties don't even pronounce or say anything on this. So shouldn't you be directing a lot of these grievances, a lot of this anger, justified anger, towards the political organizations as well? The government has a role to play. Political parties have a role to play. So like we say that we are from different parties. We even engage our parties at different levels, right? We even engage government. But if you can check that, the role that, remember that some of the signed agreements on the issue of veterans, on transformation and everything, the government, right? We, as we go, we look and peruse and look at those governments. Like, for example, in an event you find that a number of white security establishment, uh, uh, apartheid security forces elements, they were given uh, monies, lump sums, others through permanent lifetime medical pensions, others through lump sums. People who talk about the Chicago got 40 million. They are not aware that there were me, uh, uh, 40,000 rents a month. They are not aware that there are documents that are circulating where they are mama sellers of this world. They got your 300,000 rand lump sums in the, in the, around 1993, 1994. Your decock around about one point something million. Documents have been circulating, seeing them in the groups, around, around the, the, the social media and everything. But the point is, if you take care of, of the former enemies, why can't you take care, uh, 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 take care of your own? What are you telling us? Well, in closing, uh, Mr. Honyuza, you know, class action suits are a two-pronged process. You know, yes. the first step is cert certification. They are notorious for taking years and years to come to conclusion. Um, do you still believe that this is the best route for struggle veterans who, as you've amply described for us, are really finding themselves in financially precarious positions? Would it not be better to continue conversations, negotiations with the government, or do you believe that this class action suit, however long it takes for you to, for it to reach its conclusion, is the best course of action? Our, our lawyers are negotiating with government, have written the letter to the, the presidency. There was a response that came to say that they will consider the meeting, because we still want to meet with them, talk with them on the matter. Uh, our lawyers are still busy with the DG of the Department of Military Veterans, on the issue of pensions and put proper clarity on what should be taking place. Uh, like I'm saying that, it's not the only option that we want. We are forced to follow some of the options. Mm. We are squeezed out of the normal processes. Mm. Comradely ones that you normally go to your own comrades and knock on the door and talk to. The doors are closed. So you end up doing things that you should not have done, for example. Yes. All right. Well, Mr. Khonyuza, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming on to our program.
and sharing your story with us. That is, of course, uh, the member of the Liberation Struggle War Veterans, um, Zugisi Khonyuza, talking to us there about the plight of struggle veterans.